Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about concurrent style trailing. Uh, in some cases, people refer to it as undulating periodization, uh, but I think concurrent training really gets the gist of it better. It is a slightly broader category, uh, and a lot of what people are studying and the things that they attribute to daily undulating periodization really would apply to all concurrent training. Um, and what people need to understand when you start looking at studies and meta-analysis and everything else, and you're talking about purely muscle hypertrophy, there doesn't seem to be a difference between linear periodization and concurrent training. So for people who are just trying to essentially bodybuild or physique build, you don't need to figure out which one to run. They're equal. Uh, there have been studies showing one is better and then other studies showing the other is better. But the overall meta-analysis seems to be that there's no statistical difference in hypertrophy between linear periodization versus any sort of concurrent training. If your goal is purely muscle size, as long as the volume is equated and the certain volume thresholds are reached, you're going to stimulate maximal muscle growth in pretty much most of the muscles you train. Now, for people who don't know the difference, linear periodization means you run things generally in three-week blocks uh, in which you change your training stimulus every three weeks. A perfect example of linear periodization, if you guys go look in my training playlist, my free training programs, my off-season intermediate program is a textbook example of classic block linear periodization. Uh, undulating periodization is where you change the things not in in blocks, but you change things on a weekly basis. In other words, you change intensities and volume throughout the week. Uh, a most classic example of a concurrent style draining would be the west side conjugate method, um, which you know has been very popularized for equipped lifters. And I personally have messed with both, and I personally have used concurrent style training, and there are times when I don't use any sort of periodization for myself. But even me personally, the system I've been using, I've been leaning in the direction of a while, and I've started easing into making it a concurrent system. It's something I've been thinking of, and something I really wanted to work on uh, before I really bust out with it personally and say, hey, here's exactly what I'm doing. Um, I wanted to experiment with it a bit and fine tune the system a little bit, not in terms of the theory, but in terms of the actual practice. But when we get over to the question of performance, um, you know, I've seen Greg Knuckles post some stuff and he's going to have an article coming out soon, I guess in his Stronger by Science, is that what he calls it these days? in which he has a number of studies showing that there is a small increase in performance and strength using a, a concurrent style training or undulating periodization versus classic linear periodization. Uh, now that's interesting because we all know that that's what the West Side guys run. And, you know, I promote Alex Viata. I like Alex Viata's work, um, you know, his book, The Hybrid Athlete, and then his complete human performance. And that's what's interesting to me is that Viata has hired coaches that I respected and liked before they uh, joined his company. So he promotes concurrent style training and that's because he works with hybrid athletes. And what is it that we are doing with concurrent training? You're trying to maintain multiple performance elements at one time. Well, if you have athletes who compete or they need more than one discipline, um, concurrent style training works. And I've always said historically concurrent training tends to work better. I've usually recommended it for in-season athletes and then the off-season linear periodization. But, you know, as the science comes along, and I believe that most of us should be multifaceted in our athleticism, in other words, you don't want to be just strong, you need to be cardiovascularly fit, right? That's what all of us should be aiming for. That should be a goal. We should be fit. Uh, and so when we start looking at some of these hybrid athlete models, if you have stuff like Greg Knuckles, showing that uh, more advanced lifters, and people need to understand, when we're talking about this, we are not talking about noobs. If your bench press is 200 pounds and your squat is 300 pounds, this is not for you. We're not talking about you, unless you're, unless you're a girl, in which case, okay, maybe we're talking about you. But if you're a, a man, uh, no, we're, you need to be running some sort of linear progression, all right, if that's what you lift. Um, it doesn't matter whether your goal is hypertrophy or strength, uh, as, as if you could really separate the two. But we're talking about slightly more advanced lifters. So if we want to be multifaceted in our athleticism and our performance, uh, this starts to become a big deal. 
because you have guys like Greg Knuckles who is showing some data already, and he's, he's writing an article, and I've just got a sneak peek at it, in which he is showing that there might be a slightly larger increase in strength using undulating periodization. And I'll give you guys an example of, of kind of what I'm doing with this sort of stuff myself so that you guys can get a better feel for what we mean by this. Uh, better strength gains. And if this seems to work better for in-season athletes and it works great for hybrid athletes, I think you see where we're going. We should all really be hybrid athletes. I don't care if you're a power lifter or you're going to go compete in uh, rip toes strength lifting. We need to be multifaceted in our athleticism. You don't want to be good at just one thing. You still need conditioning. You still need cardio. Uh, you know, we, we need to be strong, fast, explosive, mobile, uh, have endurance. Uh, that's important. That's important. Uh, and I've been promoting all of that for a while. So it starts to make sense that uh, concurrent style training for advanced lifters starts to make sense if your goal is maximizing performance. And that's the big key here. For someone who just wants to be really good, getting an extra half percent or extra one percent is really largely relevant if you don't enjoy doing the training style. Uh, we're talking about when your goal is to maximize performance. It starts to make sense because he is showing that there are slightly higher strength increases. And I'll be curious to see his article when he comes out with it. And that's how a lot of hybrid athletes are training successfully now at this point. So it makes sense that for those of us who are seeking to maximize performance uh, and maximize our overall athleticism and strength and power are big components of that, and that's what we're doing in the weight room, then the system starts to make sense. And so for people who want to understand what we mean, a perfect example of, of what I'm starting to ease into right now, uh, at least on some of my days, you guys know that I have four days that I train a week, each dedicated to a major exercise, and I've been doing high volumes of triples, right? High volumes of triples, because we've got good data on that showing that can stimulate maximum hypertrophy, but it produces better strength than hypertrophy work. A little harder to recover from, but the best of both worlds. Uh, and then I do a little bit of accessory work after, and right now my accessories are power cleans and pin lay rows, but I have a day dedicated to the deadlift, the bench press, the squat, and the strict standing press, which is known as the press. And then I do accessory work uh, behind them. So in my case, what I've started doing is rotating in days now on some of these lifts to where I don't do high volumes of triples. I don't try to do seven or eight triples. I come in and I start with the weight after a warm-up, obviously. I start with the weight that I've been doing my multiple triples with, hit a triple, and then add weight and then hit another triple and then add weight and build up to basically a training max triple, meaning the highest weight that I can use for three reps without my form breaking down and without grinding it out. And because I'm doing that and rotating it with the others, that's an example of concurrent style training, right? Uh, particularly like let's say if every other week each lift gets a uh, a really heavy high intensity day and then it gets a volume day with three reps even though I'm doing three reps because people say oh this is about changing rep ranges no it's not it's about changing volume and it's about changing intensity it doesn't have to include changing rep range uh, you could run the system doing all one rep sets all three rep sets all five rep sets you're still concurrent if you're rotating through intensities and volume throughout the week then it becomes concurrent uh, the West Side guys take a different approach. The West Side guys have two days because they break theirs up into basically bench days and then squat and deadlift days. Uh, or almost as an upper body, lower body split, but more uh, movement oriented. Well, they have max effort days, two, two, two of their four days a week, their max effort days, which is they have a bench related day or press related day and a squat or deadlift related day in which they hit a training max. They go for an all-out one rep max on an exercise, right? This either their direct competition exercise or a variation of it, and they rotate through exercises. Uh, they hit a max. And then the other two days are dedicated towards high-volume dynamic effort work, which is usually two to three reps with anywhere from like eight to 12 sets using bands and chains and various implements that they use. And they have uh, math for this. It's not randomly picked. It's not randomly picked. So they have two of their days each week related to higher volume dynamic effort or speed work, right? 
So because of that, that's an example of concurrent style training, and it works very well for those guys the way they do it. Um, and actually, Viata takes a similar approach uh, to where he does something like that with his guys also on a upper lower type split. So the direction a lot of this is looking is that for late intermediate to advanced lifters who are seeking maximum performance, particularly if you're trying to train in multiple disciplines, uh, concurrent style training very well might be the way forward. I'm not saying that is an absolute, but it could be. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.